welcome to the 9 at 9 show where I share with you 9 things at 9 in the morning for less than 9 minutes. My name is Katherine Jones, founding design hacker, your host, and let's get started. What are we talking about today? 9 ways to avoid burnout when you're working from home. Here's how you do it, okay? Number one, plan the day before. I know it sounds like an obvious thing to do, but nobody does it. Plan your day before, it will make you feel way less crazy because then you won't feel overwhelmed when you wake up in the morning, okay? Number two, make sure that you have a set morning routine, okay? You want to make sure that you get all the things that you need to get done in the morning, work out, um, eat breakfast, get ready before you actually start your work day. Have like a personal time and then a start work day time. And if you have that like distinction, it's going to make a huge difference. You're gonna feel less frantic, okay? Number three, this is like one of the biggest things for me, is actually get ready for the day. With you actually get ready the day, it feels like you've shown up, you've arrived, you're actually doing things. And again, it makes you feel less scrambled. If we think about burnout, it's like you have too much going around at too much time. Get ready for the day. You're gonna feel calm, centered, ready to go. Okay, number four, take an actual lunch break. Like actually stop and do this. This is something that's hard for me that I've been practicing. Even if it's just 15 minutes. Stop, regroup, take a little breather, okay? Next thing is actually leave your house, whether that's working out, whether that's go checking your mail. Creating segments within your day is going to make you feel like you are more productive. It's going to make you feel less burned out. It's going to allow you to actually break down projects, okay? Leaving the house is going to be huge for that, okay? Number six, this is like one of the biggest things for me, is breaking up your work into chunks, okay? I'm just a woman that always has a million things to do. It's actually something I'm working on, okay? And, um, but... I think one of the reasons why I have a million things to do is because I know that I can get them done, okay? <laughs> so I have two things that work really, really well for me. I almost gamify my entire day, um, and I do it in two ways. You can do this for you if you want. You cannot do this for you if you want. This works really well for me um, because I feel like I'm, I feel like, again, I'm playing a game. So the first thing that I do is I'll set a timer for 20 minutes, and I just see how much I can get done 20 minutes. And it's just like I'm racing against the clock. And then I'll take a break for five and I just do 20 minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes, five minute breaks, increment throughout the whole day. It is amazing when you're just like laser focused for 20 minutes and then you're like, cool, poof, I'm going on Instagram for five minutes. And then you come back and then you go back on Instagram or then you come back and then you watch a YouTube video or then you come back and you take a walk outside, right? Like going hard for 20 minutes and five is really good. Another thing that I do, and this has been my strategy lately, it's worked really, really well for me, again, gamifying it, is I just take sticky notes and I put five tasks on the sticky notes. And then I start a stopwatch and it's cool. How fast can I get these five things done? Boom. And I will just like, I just like live my day by five minute task increments in sticky notes. Those are two ways that I do it. Again, I am like a very achievement oriented, competitive person. So it's so like even me against the clock is fun. For me it's like it actually becomes fun where i'm like oh my gosh come at me i'm gonna get you done in 17 minutes fool right it's just fun for me then i write 17 minutes in the front and then i like post it up my wall i feel very accomplished okay that's one thing you need now the next thing you need to do number seven is set boundaries with people when you're working at home sometimes people think you're not doing anything and this was something that i had to work on a lot with when i had roommates or when i had siblings that lived close by i was like listen working from home means i still have a job so let me walk you through It'd be like, I'd want to be there for you 100%, but let me walk you through when I'm available and when I'm not available. Now, if you have kids, I learned this example from my coach, Katie, where honestly they have conversations and they renew them about every month or so where they have conversations with their kids where they're like, listen, how are we doing? How's the schedule working? Like mom needs three hours right now. So let's talk about what we're going to do during those three hours. Like here's, you're going to do your work. Mom's going to do her work. And this is what it looks like. Now, again, I know that as kids are younger or older, that's going to change based on how you can do that. Um, but actually having those conversations and setting objectives and boundaries or agreements can be really, really powerful. Okay. Next thing, number eight is create what my friend Brooke Evans called look forward to's. Um, you can do this on a macro scale as well as a micro scale. I like to, I really enjoy both. <laughs> Where you're like, okay, hey, cool, listen, I'm gonna kill it and in six weeks I'm going on this business trip here, it's gonna be so fun, right? But you can also do ones in the middle of the day where it's even just like, hey, listen, like, um, like for me, like I know this is like really, really dumb, but I, um, like I love um, my gummy vitamins <laughs> and like I use them as a reward. Like I know that's stupid, but I use them as a reward. So I'm like, okay, cool, like I know that at lunch I eat my gummy vitamin. It's just like a little thing. Or I know at night that I do this, or I know that blah, blah, blah. Just like little things throughout the day that are like mini rewards where you're like, okay, cool, we're doing it, okay? Then number nine, one of the things, and this is really, really tricky and something that I am honestly still working on because I can physically stop it, but stopping in my 
mind or learning how to organize that, but making a conscious decision of when you're going to end work, be present with your humans and then start back up again. Um, taking the time and making the conscious decision to end work will allow you to actually avoid burnout. So I know a lot of people are working from home right now. I hope that this helps. You're amazing. If you want to learn more tips from other people just like you working at home, come join our free Facebook group, Zen Hackers Official. See you on the inside.